Sean Naden, former LVO champion. Thanks so much for joining us, mate. Really appreciate it. I want to start with that win at the LVO, that game against Nick Rose. Good friend of yours. How much fun was that? Uh, that LVO was a lot of fun. The Lichter Shameless took everybody by storm, came out of left field a little bit. Uh, Nick and I had actually played earlier in the event, and I had lost to him. So it was good to come full circle and uh, beat him. It was a lot of fun. I actually I wasn't on the stream table round one of the finals, but round two I was on the stream table, and I walked up to the stream table, and I was like, I think I just won LVO. This terrain is great for my list. <laughs> like It was right. vastly different than basically the rest of the room that year. Uh, way more dense, way more saturated. So that that was what I felt. Uh, I had to play the Eldar um, and Tyler in that round, but I, I felt like the terrain worked out for me, and then came full circle in the final versus Nick in a close one. You guys had previously discussed, you know, the possibility of both of you getting that far and, and how much fun it would be to face off against each other. Does friendship go to one side, though, when you're playing the final of the LVO, or, or are you still able to kind of see your friend on the other side of the table and have some fun? For me, it never really goes aside um, at the table. I think if you're friends with somebody at the table, it, it amplifies it in some ways. You can talk more trash. You can you know, be more relaxed knowing that um, you're both going to intend the right things with each other throughout the whole game. So you know, they know you and how you're going to behave. You know them. As long as you don't change yourself because it's a top table, I don't think you you're and your friendships will change it either. Where are you at these days with goals when you go to an LVO? I mean, you've performed so consistently well. You've had the win, you've had a third, you've had a fourth. I don't know what else. You've, you've been there or thereabouts so many times. And when you're going into this year's LVO, are you looking at that again or are you just you're going for fun? Where do you set yourself now? I took most of this year off. Uh, we had the birth of my uh, daughter, my second child, uh, right before LVO last year. Um, my wife was gracious to let me finish out the season. Her birthday is actually tomorrow. I don't know when this podcast will land, but that is when it is. It's, it's her birthday. So it's just this time of year. And uh, that's where I was last year. This year, I took most of the season off. I didn't play until October in a singles event, really. And I didn't make it to enough big ones for LVO to matter that much in terms of season awards. So I'm just going to go and do the best I can. I, I Spent a lot of that time off painting an orc army that I was excited about that I had bought during COVID, but not really gotten around to painting as a, you know, mental flush in terms of, I feel my painting skills had risen past where my Eldar were set. And, you know, when you have an army, you keep just painting to match that army. It's hard to expand painting wise. So I expanded skill wise into the orcs. So I'm going to bring the orcs. I've been trying to, you know, make them still a competitive army and fit different things, but I don't really focus on too much else than that than looking my best and playing my best uh i think things line up decently well for the orcs at lvo there's some bad matchups for that army it's just inevitable and i've always understood that about 40k is that sometimes to win an event you have to dodge those bad matchups but the way the missions are at least structure out day two and day three are the best missions for orcs um certainly how i play the goth pressure style list so that at least is in my favor um if i make it to those days when you were historically going to have the harder matchups at least the missions are now slated towards me so i'm fascinated in how you choose an army i've kind of loosely followed your playing career over the last couple of years and you seem from the outside to be a guy who will pick an army and then stick with it no matter what you played eldar when they apparently sucked and you still did really well with them now you're playing orcs out of kind of nowhere and having success with them too i love how you've undersold yourself you've won events with these orcs over the last little while and now you're coming into lvo with that so when you choose an army do you choose based on what the meta is and going against that do you choose based on the painting and just models you like how do you pick a an army for yourself uh it's a lot of both uh ostensibly they they also have pointy ears if i've only played pointy ears in singles events for about seven or eight years <laughs> um the orcs have pointy ears too um which is funny but uh i played mostly just the elves and focused on those for six seven years this year was the first year i played anything other than elves i think certainly competitively and it's 
to me, the, the Orcs change was a modeling choice. Again, I wanted to refer, paint something different. They have a beautiful model range that's in mostly plastic. So that all factors in. And that's where I started with my Orc journey. I picked the models I thought were cool looking and saw what would happen on the tabletop with those. And some of them have to come out. You try other things as you go, uh, as you add to a list. It's really hard when you start a new army. I think when you start a new army, you have to have kind of a love for it, whether it's lore, whether it's model-based, because otherwise, why would you stick to it? Um, so I love the Eldar range, the Dark Eldar range, the Hawkwinds, and I love their lore. That's you know one of my first loves, one of my longest loves. And so I stick to that and paint and work and practice those. Whether they're up or down, I'm going to play them at various times. Um, and similarly with the orcs, I think they just, they are cool. They function really cool. I don't like the way they functioned when they were really good, like last year. And I wasn't playing them then, obviously, but the shooting bit, I like, I want to punch people if I'm an orc. I want to use s- silly characters. I want to get in, mix it up, be in close combat. That's what I like about 40k anyway, even with my Eldar and Dark Eldar and Harlequin builds. I, I'm always focused on the close combat. Less guns is better, right? And orcs, I don't know. They can't shoot. Like, BS5, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, as a spaceball player, I get it. I get it. Um, you mentioned the terrain. I'm interested in how you think the terrain is going to go for visiting players, particularly people coming from uh, Australia, the UK, Europe, uh, who have a, a different terrain set or are used to the way terrain is set out differently. How do you think they're going to go coming into the LVO? I think they'll do fine. Good players are good players, regardless of the terrain setup. I know some people make big deals about terrain, and it is a huge factor in how games go and what lists do well. I kind of ignore it a lot because, again, I spend so much of my time painting a list that I don't really, I can't really have a different list for different terrain setups. I just don't have that kind of time. Um, so the same list that I play for GW terrain, I play for frontline gaming terrain, I play for WTC tiles terrain, like that's that's just that's just my mo they they all do function differently um i don't know if there's a clear fast which one's best i've enjoyed the gw ones um i go to i go to a lot of frontline gaming events when i've had the time this year a little less i went to a couple um i love reese frankie and their whole team so i i I have no problem with how they run their events when they when they switch the player place there's improvement over when the the edition changed and as they grow and can add terrain and I think some of the changes they've made to the first level floor blocking and some of them, the fixed middle in a bunch of them. I think that all that's positive. I think as long as we're growing and changing and adapting to the issues that the community have, terrain sets will always change. Even GW is um, changing up how their terrain is placed in, in some of their missions too. So all, all, all things with terrain just need, if the players know that the TOs are working on it and it'll adapt as there are issues, then I have no problem no matter what the different setups are. Who do you expect to see in the final four or at the top table? Who are the names you expect to be there? Names? I'm not so good. I don't even know any of the names that are good this year. Like I didn't play that much. There's all kinds of new <laughs> names up there. Like you know, uh, I think you think you're gonna see Tau. I think Tau is still a problem that the the data doesn't interpret how good Tau are uh, into a lot of people, and so I think there'll be a lot of good Tau players there. I think there'll be chaos stuff, whether it's demons or chaos space marines, because they're insanely popular. So, like, I think the volume of them, and they're strong. They're like, let's let's be real. The flamers, whether they're added or whether they're in regular demon stuff, it's one of the few things that actually gives Tau problems and deals with them. So, I think we're going to see some thousand suns mixed up with flamers, some straight demons, some straight chaos space marines, and some Tau. I think those will be the big, the big bangers. Um, probably an Eldar list and an Orc list, and that'll that'll round out your top eight. Uh, and an orc list. I like that. No, no. A specific orc list. A specific uh, I love, orc list. Yeah. What I love about LVO is you always get that kind of long shot dark horse making his or her way through to the, you know, the top 16 or the top eight. There's some random Black Templar list or whatever that kind of ends up there by virtue of a good run or good terrain or whatever it might be or just great play. So I love that at the LVO with all of these players there and that amazing environment. Can you tell me about that before we go? I know we've got to go, but tell me about the environment of the LVO and how much you enjoy going because you're there all the time. You're there every time. Yeah, I missed the first one. The first one was the only one I didn't go to. And then I made the top eight in every one of them. But last year, uh, I didn't have a loss, but I didn't have enough points, I guess. So um, it's an amazing experience. It's the wildest amount of 40K people that can be in a room, basically, 
ever in in singles. I mean, I, I've heard that there's some gigantic team events in Spain or various places that are that have Trump numbers, but like you know, it's it's insane when you walk into a room and it's all these people that play the same game as you that have fun doing the same things as you and and you get to play them. But and it but it's a weird tournament in that regard too because we're we're used when you go into a smaller like hardcore meta, you sometimes will have a harder tournament. Um, I don't know that the LVO is technically a harder tournament because of the number of people. Um, you may not play any, but because of the random pairings and how many people, you may not play a top player until round six. You may not never play a top player um, or, or whatnot. You may never play a top 50 player. It's it's just very strange with the amount of volume of people. And like you said, some some people go on runs or from nowhere or armies go on runs from nowhere and get carried or whatnot so it's a very interesting experience or you could have a terrible time and play all top players randomly in <laughs> in your run um it's it's just it's so out there you can't even plan for it so you just to me you plan to do the best you can do and have as much fun as you can because you know it's it's at the end of the day it's warhammer and we, we just want to have fun roll dice and chop people's heads off like with orc. <laughs> Actually, I think my, my list is like points divided by power fists or power claws or whatever we call them. <laughs> I, love I feel like that should be the tagline for all of Warhammer. We just want to have fun, roll dice, and chop people's heads off. It's a great place to finish. Yeah. Thanks so much, man. Great to talk to you.